In this example, we'll get a little bit more practice working with set operations, union, intersection, and complement. We're given a universal set U, and then we're given two sets A and B. And we're told to find each of these pieces, so we need to read the notation and understand what it means. In the first one, inside parentheses, we have A union B, and then we take the complement. So that tells us our order of operations. First, we'll take the union, and then we'll find the complement of that resulting set. To find the union, we'll start with everything in A, and then add in any elements from B that we don't already have listed which will be four. We already have five listed, and then we'll list the six, and we already have seven. So everything's accounted for. Since that's the union, the complement of that will be everything from the universal set except for these. So we'll start with the universal set, the numbers one through 10, and remove these from it. And what will be left is the two. We take away the one, the three, the four, the five, six, and seven, which leaves eight, nine, and 10. So that's the first one, the complement of their unions. In part B, we're taking the intersection of two things, and we'll start by finding A complement and B complement, and then take their intersection. So A complement, is everything from the universe that's not in A. So we take away one, three, five, and seven from the universe. We get two, four, six, eight, and nine and 10. For B complement, we do the same thing. Start with all the numbers from one to 10, the universe, and remove from those four, five, six, and seven. So we'll have one, two, three, take away four, five, six, and seven, and eight, nine, and 10. Now, finally, we take the intersection of these two. So we look for what elements appear in both of them at the same time. And we notice the two appears in both, as do the eight, nine, and 10. Notice something interesting. We got the same result as we did for the first one. This is not a coincidence. Anytime you have two sets, if you take the complement of their union, like in part A, or you take the intersection of their complements, you're going to get the same thing every time. This is an example of one of De Morgan's laws for sets. Parts C and D will illustrate De Morgan's other law for sets, and we'll notice that those two are also going to be equal. If you take the complement of the intersections, and the union of the complements, you'll get the same thing. So you can kind of think of this as the complement being distributed across these parentheses, and as it does, it changes a union into an intersection, or changes an intersection, like in part C, into a union, like in part D. But let's illustrate that with part C and D. First, we'll find the intersection of A and B, looking for what elements appear in both, the one doesn't, the three doesn't, but the five and the seven both do. So then the complement of that will be everything in the universe except for five and seven. So one, two, three, four, not five, but six, not seven, and then eight, nine, and 10. And finally, when we do the last one, we've already found A complement and B complement. So to take their union, again, we'll start with everything in A complement. Two, four, six, eight, nine, and 10. And then include everything from B complement that we don't already have. So we'll include the one and the three. These last two sets are not listed in the same order, but they are the same set, because again, the order within a set doesn't matter, it just matters what elements we have listed. So the complement of the intersections 
and the union of their complements are identical.